Hey guys, what's up? Dave here with Deranged Off-Road. Today I'm doing a little video on uh, what I wished I had known uh, before buying a side-by-side. -side. And this isn't just me, it's whatever. Uh, just some things I've come up with, some things I wish people had told me or I thought about, that type of thing. So, let's get started. Um, first and foremost, this hobby is not cheap. Uh, every little thing is expensive. Um, take for example, uh, oil changes. Can-Am X3. Oil change for a little over two quarts and a filter. Again, you gonna run you $50, $65 from the dealer, depending on where you go. Uh, take for example, my diesel pickup truck. Take 16 quarts of oil with the filter. I can get that done for about a hundred bucks. Uh, also keep in mind, I can drive over 5,000 miles in my truck before I actually need to do an oil change. Uh, side by sides, typically 500 miles to maybe a couple thousand if you're doing light duty type stuff. So things are expensive in the side by side world uh, for lots of reasons. Some deservedly so more expensive. Others like the oil thing. I think it's kind of a gimmick. I don't care if the oil says Can-Am, Polaris, Honda on it, whatever. Uh, I do not believe they have specially formulated oils for their machines. I think it's a bunch of BS. That's just one thing. Um, another thing people should think about, I didn't really think about, is how much maintenance goes into these things. Uh, if you're doing it right, you should be checking your machine over after every ride. Uh, you need to be washing it so you can get a good look of what's happening. You need to be checking wheel bearings all the time. You need to be checking bushings. Uh, you need to be checking the belt. If it's got a belt, blowing out the belt box, uh, clutch covers, clutches, all of that stuff. There's a lot of routine maintenance that goes into owning a lot of different side-by-sides. Um, you can look in your owner's manual. They tell you what to check for, how often to check it that type of thing. They generally have a really good list on what to check and when. Uh, there's there's a lot of maintenance that goes into these things. Um, preventative maintenance, that's key. Uh, trust me when I tell you, you'd rather do the maintenance in your garage than 50 miles away out in the boon sticks, <laughs> out in the boon sticks, out in the boonies. Uh, you don't want to be working in the dirt. so. Keep on top of the maintenance and your ride will run better, longer, and be more reliable for it. I promise you that. Um, another thing people don't talk about or think about before buying a side-by-side -side is uh, insurance. Uh, a lot of people, and it's great that they can do this, pay cash for their machine, good for them, um, and then they don't insure their machine. And then next thing you know, they've totaled it, whatever happened, happened. And then they're just out that money that they spent on that machine. Guys, it's very, 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 very important to get full coverage insurance on your side-by-side. -side. Those of you who pay cash might think, well, what do I need insurance on it for? And I've read a dozen times in the Facebook groups, whatever. People not insuring their machine and then they crash it and, they're the, and then they're like, what do I do? Well, guess what? You just lost twenty to $40,000 because you didn't have insurance. I don't know how a lot of people who are financing get away with not having insurance. I've never seen a vehicle financed that didn't require it for the financing company to uh, protect themselves or they just got a personal loan or something like that. It sucks if you're paying on something that you don't actually have anymore. So. Get yourself insured. The last thing you want to do is take a freaking twenty to forty thousand dollar kick to the testicles because you didn't want to spend thirty to seventy dollars a month to insure it. It's very important. All right, another thing to consider very heavily when you're looking at a side by side is which rig is best for you and your circumstance. Uh, you definitely need to be thinking about where you're riding, who you're riding with, what type of riding you're doing uh, to determine what machine, well, it'll play a factor in what machine you need. Um, the last thing you want to do is go buy a Can-Am Defender 
when you're going to be spending most of your time out in the sand dunes. Because it's just not going to work, you know. So, uh, you really need to take that into consideration. Uh, I see people all the time, machines for sale, with like 100, 200 miles on it, and they're like, well, this just wasn't what I thought it would be. Well, that's because you didn't do any research, and you didn't think about what you actually needed. So, take some time, figure out what machine is going to suit your type of riding best. And there's always compromises, so you just have to decide what you can compromise on and what you absolutely have to have. Uh, another thing, cab heat. Guess what guys, I don't care who you are, where you're at, what you're doing, all these side-by-sides generate a lot of cab heat inside. They get hot. And if you're in a four-seater and you're like, it's not hot, get in the back seat and ride back there for a while. It, I bet it's hot back there. Anyways, um, yeah, there's a lot of cab heat in here. You need to think about it. Is a side-by-side -side actually what you want? Can you handle 120 degrees inside of an enclosed area for any amount of time? Side-by-sides put out a lot of heat. Uh, another thing I didn't think about or even consider was that uh, my family wasn't actually too excited to go out riding after a few rides. Like my wife, she loves it. My two boys, they they usually love it. You know, they like to go ride. But one of my daughters, we found out really quickly, she gets motion sick badly. And the other daughter, she's older, she just doesn't want to hang out with her mom and dad anymore. So, uh, don't be like me and buy a Can-Am Defender with six seats because you figured everybody's going to want to go riding all the time. Uh, guess what? There's a good chance your kids aren't going to actually want to go all the time. So, it's kind of a tough call there. Sometimes they'll want to go, sometimes they won't. Um, another thing along those lines is <clears throat> your kids get bored in the back seat. Don't drag them on a 100 mile ride during the day because then they will never want to go again. The best rides for kids are those that you stop a lot, get out, do things, let them play, and be kids. That's, that's the most important thing for them. Another thing to consider is accessories. Eh, <laughs> accessories are so expensive. The worst thing is when you buy an accessory, we'll take, for example, a, a windshield. Nothing is worse than buying a windshield, spending three, four hundred bucks on it, and then discovering you don't like it, or after a couple rides and a couple washes, it's so scratched up, you can't see anything out of it. Uh, been there, done that, bought several windshields, and it's expensive. And so, what I'm saying is, do research into every accessory you buy. Really think about it. Do you actually need it? And, you know, just search it out. You don't want to buy accessories twice. It's very expensive, and it just sucks. And on that note of accessories, have you guys gone down, clicked on our Rocky Mountain link down there to go to Rocky Mountain ATV MC to check out what accessories they have for you? Guys, they have everything. Go check it out. Hit that link. Help us out. If you buy something through there, we get a little bit of piece of that pie. doesn't cost you guys any extra money, but seriously, you can get all your oil change kits, you can get any accessory, OEM, aftermarket, whatever you need. Rocky Mountain has it. It's over 75 bucks. Free shipping. You'll have it within three days, I swear. Three business days. They got a warehouse here in Utah and one out in Kentucky, I believe. They basically got the whole country covered within like a three or four day shipping time zone. Uh, so go ahead and check them out. They're awesome. Literally every accessory we've bought comes from Rocky Mountain. Not everyone, but a lot for our UTVs, or our uh, motorcycles. Uh, pretty much everything comes from Rocky Mountain. So go check them out. So maybe this is the number one thing here is uh, when you're searching a side-by-side -side out, the dealership. Uh, guys, there's some good dealers, there's some crappy dealers, and there's some okay dealers. 
really the dealership can make or break your whole side-by-side -side experience. Um, you might get an okay deal through the sales team there, but I think what's even more important is checking out the service department before you sign on any dotted line. Uh, go talk to those guys, get a feel for their vibe in the shop there, see how it looks, um, ask about warranty work, you know, you kind of have to get a feel for it because honestly the service department in a dealer is going to make or break any type of warranty work that gets done. Some like to do warranty work, some hate to do warranty work, and um, you don't want to get one of those service departments that hates doing warranty work. Uh, they are, or should be, your biggest advocate with the manufacturer when it comes to getting things covered under warranty. So. To put it bluntly, a lot of dealerships suck and they're not a good advocate for you when it comes to getting things fixed. Uh, there's, I've experienced it, tons of people have experienced it. Nothing worse than going in, asking if, you know, if something's covered. They say, well, bring it in and then your machine sits there for two, three, four, five, six, eight weeks, three months with nothing being done happens all the time guys if you go into a service department go look outside do they have 50 machines out in their back lot behind a rinky dinky chain link fence waiting to get worked on if so that's probably a bad sign um so choose carefully who your warranty you know who your dealer is going to be because honestly the whole dealership can make or break your experience i know people drive clear across the country to buy machines, good for them, but if their local dealer sucks, that sucks. And anyways, I digress. Uh, so that's a few of the things I could think about. Let me know down in the comments what you guys maybe didn't think about or wish you would have thought about or complete surprises. Uh, let's get some conversation going down there. That'd be awesome. So that's it, guys. Uh, if this was helpful or enlightening or anything, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't considered subscribing, please do so. Uh, helps us out a lot. Um, helps YouTube know that they should spread the word, shares our video with other people that are maybe never even seen our channel before. There's a lot of you out there. Um, so, take care, have a good day, and we'll talk to you later.